All right guys, welcome back to the video. So we're still working on the dovetail blanket chest here. So in the first video, we got all of our panels glued up and then we got the actual case of the blanket chest here all glued up. We got all our dovetails nicely put together and it came out really well. The one issue is I did the glue up on my workbench, which I should not have done. I should have done it on my table saw uh, because right now, uh, if you can see on my workbench, the way that it's sitting right now, it's not rocking around. And that's a very bad sign because I know that my workbench is not flat and I know it has a pretty good twist to it. So the fact that this is uh, not rocking around on my workbench, it shows me that there's something wrong. So I took the base of the case here against my table saw and there is a little bit of rocking around, but nothing too serious. But I noticed that as soon as I took the piece of melamine off of the workbench here and placed this, you know, where it is now, uh, that there's no rocking around and that usually denotes a pretty annoying problem. But anyway, what we're gonna start with today is just getting all of the dovetails cleaned up. Because in order to do everything that I wanna do to this case, we're gonna need to have some nice flush dovetails. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna flush those up with the hand plane. We're then gonna start working on the top and the bottom of the case here to make sure that they're sitting nice and flat because that's very important. It should be pretty quick and easy to go through and take out whatever twist there is. And you know, we'll just do all that with the hand plane because that's gonna be the easiest option. Right, so we've got the age-old question of should I fill the gaps in my joiner or should I leave them exposed? Now, every time I talk about this, I always get at least one comment from, from one of the, either of these two sides. So the first side is uh, the whole reason this uh, this question even exists. Someone will always leave a comment of, well, why do you fill your joinery? Why not just cut better joinery? Then you wouldn't have to fill anything. You know, that's a really annoying, kind of a stupid thing because any of us who actually do joinery and work with real traditional joinery, you're always gonna get gaps in it. Even if you'd spend, you know, days, you know, fine tuning your dovetails to be just perfect, you're always gonna end up with a little gap. You know, a fiber might break out, something like that. It's, it's gonna happen. The other side of it is you get people telling you, don't be ashamed of the gaps in your joinery. You, sh you should never feel ashamed of, of your joinery. Just be proud of the fact that you're cutting traditional joinery. That side, although a little bit on the more positive side, being more understanding, 
is also kind of annoying too. I don't feel ashamed that there's gaps in my joinery. It is what it is, you know? Yes, I could have done a little bit better with that, that dovetail jig to, you know, really dial in the fit of my joinery, but it is what it is. You know, I have some minor gaps here and there that I don't mind, you know? It's gonna, it, 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 like I said before, it's wood, it's gonna happen, especially when you're dealing with traditional joinery like this. So going in and just doing a little bit of filling around all of my edges in that, I don't feel any shame in that, you know, and I don't think anyone else should. That's one of the weirdest things that I've, I've come across here on YouTube that I started noticing lately is that when you're watching a lot of these, you know, the, these big name woodworkers here on YouTube, you, you'll see them do a dry fit of their joint. If you look really closely, you know, there's sometimes you'll see small gaps in that. Then in the finished piece, magically their joinery doesn't have any gaps in it. So you know that a lot of these big name woodworkers are doing, you know, the gap filling like I'm doing here but for some reason they don't talk about it. Nobody seems to talk about the fact that it's okay to fill the gaps in your joinery. All you ever hear is the one side of, you know, you should never be ashamed of filling the gaps in your joinery. Don't be ashamed, leave those gaps, at least by having the gaps in there, everyone knows it's handmade. It's like, it's, it's one of those things where I don't think it adds to it or takes away from it. So it's just one of those things. Anytime I fill the gaps in my joinery, I always make sure to show it on camera because I want to make sure people know that, you know, my joinery is not always perfect. It might look perfect, you know, in the final photos and that that I show in the final video clips and all that, but that's because I go through and, you know, I, I sometimes I'll fill the gaps in my joints and all that kind of stuff. So it's one of those things where I'm just trying to be honest with you guys. You know, I do fill the gaps quite often because it's, I just prefer the look of it. So now we have the top and the bottom edges nice and flat. That number seven jointer plane came in beautifully. I am the best for bucks I ever spent because I noticed with the low angle jack I was definitely getting some areas that were not coming out nice and flat across here just because it's a shorter plane so going up to the bigger number seven just made sure I flattened out the whole surface here just beautifully so I really I'm so glad I bought that plane so just in case you didn't get what I was doing there these are what's called winding sticks now these are a pretty expensive set you can buy them from Lee Valley uh, I like them because they're aluminum and I know they're never going to move on me you can also make them out of wood there's plenty of tutorials online that you can find you know they're super easy that way but I really like these Veritas ones because again, they're a precision straight edge and they're not gonna move around on me. But anyway, all you do with these is I started by putting one just on this back edge here. And then this other one just moves down the line and it just lets me check for any twists because when you sight down them, if the top edge of this doesn't line up nicely with one of the lines in this, in this winding stick, then you know you've got some twist. So all you do, you just remove material from one corner or the other, you know, either this corner or that corner, you know, whatever, until you get these bars sitting nice and even all the way across. And I've done that through here. And so the best way to check is always gonna be checking on a flat surface like your table saw. So being able to take this, set it on the table saw to make sure it's nice and flat, that's the best way to check. But that takes a lot of work because you gotta take it off the bench, over to the table saw, check it on the table saw, bring it from the table saw back to the bench, get it all set up again, just to make some small adjustments. So the winding sticks will get you really, really close. And then you can do kind of your final one or two checks on the table saw so before you know that it's perfectly flat on the bottom so if you don't have a set of winding sticks these ones again from lee valley super good i absolutely love them they were well worth it or you can make your own for basically nothing out of the scrap wood you have laying around the shop but yeah either way have a set of winding sticks around even if you're not you know a hardcore hand tool user these will definitely come in handy so i'm going to let the fillings dry up for a little bit uh, before i come back and sand them off we're then going to go through and finish sand the outside all the way up to 220 grit we're still probably going to get banged up a little bit while we're working on this thing but i want to get this case pretty much done before we start moving on the other parts because once we're done with the case then we're going to move on to the base because i think that's going to be the next most logical area <laughs> Okay, so on to the 
the base now. So luckily enough, from a project that I abandoned that, well, the wood for this chest is coming from, uh, I have these stretchers that are the exact size that I need. Uh, they're two and a quarter inches wide, which is the exact size I wanted the base to be. So I was able to just pull them off the lumber rack. They're fully squared up and milled. They still are nice and flat. So they're all good to go. And so for the corners of this base, I'm planning to use miters because I think they'll look nice and clean and they'll contrast nicely with the dovetails that I have on here already. So the miters will be a little bit of a cleaner joint compared to the dovetails, which are a little bit more uh, busy visually. So I think it's gonna be a really good combination. Okay, so one piece of advice, if you're thinking about upgrading your table saw, get a 52 inch table, if at all possible. If you have the space for it, get the biggest possible tabletop you can possibly get for the saw that you want. Uh, for this saw stop contractor saw, I, I, I got the 36 inch fence, but you could get up to a 52 inch fence. And on pretty much every project I've done over the past year, I've hit a point where I'm like, if I just had that slightly larger saw table, there's so much more I could do, especially because I love to use my table saw fence for when I'm cutting, you know, miters like this, uh, doing mortise and tenon joinery, anything like that, because the fence gives you basically a micro adjust feature. Just by knocking on it, you can move it, you know, micro amounts. So it's a really accurate reference or stop for whatever you're measuring against. So what I'm doing now is I just have my fence jammed up against the wall so it can't move. And then I've got a one, two, three block clamp to it. And then I'm just using some of my Veritas setup blocks. So in this case, I've got a, a 1 32nd, I've got a 1 16th, and I've got a 3 32nd. And I'm gonna use these to just make these micro adjustments as much best I can. Now the problem is I can only go by a 30 second of an inch because that's the smallest that I have. But I also know that the fence is sitting at a little bit of an angle right now. So I know that the more I bring this one, two, three block backwards and I reference against it, that's gonna move my piece slightly closer to the blade. So it's a very jerry-rigged way of doing it. But again, hindsight being 2020, I wish I'd gone with the 52 inch tabletop. That would have just been, just having that extra space would have been just so much better.
Okay, so again, not a super crazy glue up. I'm actually sort of kind of surprised at how well this project is moving along. Uh, the glue up, yeah, like I said, not nothing went super crazy, nothing went awry. Now I, I decided to take a break and go eat some dinner before I actually did this glue up here because I wanted to think about what the uh, proper order of operations is. Because in the end, we're gonna end up gluing this base right directly to the carcass of the of the case here. So they're gonna end up getting glued together. So I thought that when I'm just doing this glue up, I might as well go through and just glue it together. But while I was sitting and enjoying my nice steak dinner, I decided that it was probably a bad idea to glue the, the base frame to the case right now, because I would still like to go in and add some keys to these miters so they actually have some rigidity to them. Once we glue the base to the case, there's not gonna be any strength issue. I could leave I could leave these miters the way they are, there wouldn't be any issue. Because this piece of wood is glued directly to the main case, we don't really have to worry about this whole joint here, it's just kind of a decorative. So that left me with kind of two options. I could do just a normal glue up like I would with like a picture frame or something, so we do, so you just set up a nice space, and, you know, put all these pieces together with masking tape, throw a strap clamp around them, super easy. But the trick is, is I really wanted to make sure that this frame was actually gonna reference the proper size of the case here. So I wanted to do the glue up on the case. So that left me with the issue of, okay, how do I glue up the frame without gluing it to the case right now? And so that's where masking tape comes in. So as you guys saw in the corners, I put two layers of frog tape, which is a really good quality uh, masking tape. It's gonna make sure there's no, no uh, glue bleeding through. Uh, so it's gonna make sure that our frame is not gonna be glued to the case right now. Then I just did the glue up the same way that I've been dry assembling and checking this frame the whole time through. So I've gone through and I've checked my corners multiple times now. I've made sure that everything is as good as I can possibly get it right now. Uh, we're probably gonna end up with some gaps. I usually, you know, I'm not very good with miters, so I always end up with some gaps in them. But again, it's nothing that a little crack filler can't fix. So overall, I think this is gonna be great. Uh, and it means that tomorrow we'll be able to just pop the frame off put our keys into the corners and then we'll be done with it. It'll be, then, we'll, then we will fully be ready to glue it onto the actual base here, but it'll be a lot easier to kind of do some of the finishing touches to the base here with, with it separate from the rest of the case. So that means that tomorrow we're gonna be finishing off the base, getting it ready. Then once we have the base done, we'll might either move over to the lid or we might start working on some of the internal components of this. I have a really cool idea for what I wanna do for the base of this thing, which you guys get to see later on in the project, but I had kind of an epiphany moment today uh, for something that I wanna try. So that's gonna be really fun and exciting for me anyway. Uh, but yeah, anyways guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always guys, I will see you in the next one.